So now that we are familiar with resonance compounds and delocalized electrons, it's time to start talking about a specific case, specific type of these uh, resonance compounds, and that is aromatic compounds. Um, aromatic compounds are named for aromas. Most of them have pleasant aromas, pleasant smells, if you think of cinnamon or wintergreen or something like that. The most famous one that you're probably familiar with, the most famous aromatic compound, is benzene. Benzene was first isolated in 1825, but it took a little while, it took almost 40 years to figure out the actual structure. They knew that the formula was C6H6, so there must be some sort of some pi bonds in there, but they weren't exactly sure. And in 1866, Frederick Kekulé uh, figured out, he had an interesting idea, and he figured out that benzene has a six-membered ring with three alternating pi bonds. So there's resonance going around, around in the ring. And that resonance makes it have special properties. We can also draw it, if you notice the way I drew it with the pi bonds alternating, I can draw them on the, the other carbons, and I actually drew the wrong one here, I can draw them, draw them on the alternating carbons. That's still a similar structure, that's an equivalent structure. And actually we know from resonance that there's actually a hybrid structure here, um, and so we can actually sometimes draw benzene with the six membered ring and you'll see a circle around in the middle and that shows you that there are six pi electrons that are in resonance completely around the ring. Um, now benzene is a specific example and after this next section we'll focus primarily on benzene but for now let's talk about what makes something aromatic. So what are the properties of something being aromatic? We're going to look at four things that are required and then I'm going to give you a few examples. First of all, the compounds must be cyclic. They must be completely in a ring. If they aren't in a ring, they still have resonance, but they don't have these special aromatic properties that we'll, we'll talk about. They, they behave differently in reactions. Um, second of all, um, not only do we want them to be in a ring, we want them to be completely uh, resonance delocalized. And I'm going to say resonance stabilized around the entire ring. Now, there may be several rings, and one ring may be aromatic, one not, but the entire ring that we're talking about must be stabilized by resonance. They also must be flat. So to share the delocalization, they must be flat for those pi electrons to um, delocalize. The ring must be flat. Now this is difficult. I'm going to put a star by this. By looking at a structure, it's difficult to tell. We would have to tell you that it's flat, um, but if you know something is aromatic, then you know it must be flat. And the last thing, it has to have the right number of electrons, the right number of pi electrons. This is called Huckel's rule. And there's just a formula, and you can put any integer in for the formula, and the formula is 4n plus 2. So 4n plus 2 pi electrons. So if you put that in, if you put any integer, so 0, 1, 2, 3, you would, if you put a 0 in here, you would have 6 pi electrons. If you put a 1, I mean, I'm sorry, if you put a 0, you'd have 2 pi electrons. If you put a 1, you'd have 6 pi electrons. So 1, 6, 10, 14 are the, are the magic numbers. Those are the numbers that we actually need. Um, as a side note, if you have 4n pi electrons, so 4, 8, 12, 16, something is considered anti-aromatic. See if I can fit this down here. So it would be less stable than normal. It's not stable, so not happy. All right, so let's look at a few examples of these and we'll see what happens. And remember, we're looking at these, these four things are required to be aromatic. So aromatic gives you different properties. You don't do a normal reaction. So for example, we learned that pi electrons, pi bonds will react with bromine to form the dibromo compounds. Well, aromatic compounds will not. We, we can have a strong Lewis, um, Lewis acid that can help affect that reaction, but generally they will not react with bromine like a regular pi bond would. They're, they're aromatic, they have different properties. So here are some examples we can look at and see and determine whether these are aromatic or not. So first example, if I give you something like this, um, hexatriene. All right, right off the bat, we see it's not in a ring. It's resonance stabilized and it has six, it matches Huckel's rule, probably flat, but is not in a ring, so that is not aromatic. Uh, it's a stable compound, but it's not aromatic. Um, what if I give you something like this, um, or that has something like that? 
That one is in a ring, but it's not resonance stabilized. So we would not consider that one aromatic. It is not completely around the ring resonance stabilized. Um, another example is this five-membered ring. Um, this one, once again, it is in a ring, but is not resonance stabilized. We're looking for double single, double single, double single, double single, that pattern all the way around, and we don't have that pattern. At the top, you'll see double single, double single. That one's not in a ring, though. Here, if we go around the bottom, double single, double single, single. So this one is not aromatic. But this one's kind of interesting. It has a pKa of about 16, which is fairly acidic for an organic compound. So why is this compound happy to get rid of a proton, relatively speaking? And the reason is, if you'll notice, if this loses a proton and forms the anion, this is now resonance stabilized. So we can look at it like, double, single, double, single, charge, single, double, single, charge, single. So this can move around. So this is resonance stabilized. So this is now aromatic. So now it will do different reactions, have different properties than a regular compound. All right, so now we looked at ions. Uh, um, as a side note, if we tried this exact thing with a seven-membered ring, let's see if I can erase this. So cycloheptatriene, it is not quite as acidic as we would think as, as the five-membered one. So if we tried with the seven-membered ring, um, this one has a pKa of, I have it written down here, 39. And the reason is, let's see what it is. Why is this one not as happy to get rid of the um, proton as the five-membered ring is? Well, if you notice, if we put the lone pair here, all right, this one does is, is cyclic. We can't tell from looking if it's flat, but we can see double single, double single, double single, charge single, so it is completely resonance stabilized. So what is the problem here? Well, Huckel's rule, if we count the pi electrons, every pi bond counts as two, two, four, six, and this lone pair does count. We'll come back to that in just a second. This lone pair does count. So two, four, six, eight. This is anti-aromatic, so this is not stable. Let's look at the five-membered ring, two, four, six aromatic. So that one is stable. So what is the rule then when we have a charge? The rule is only one pair of electrons can count into the in the pi, pi region, the pi cloud. So every atom, if there's already a pi bond, you do not count the lone pair. You do not count those electrons. If there's not a pi bond, you can count only one. Perhaps it has two lone pairs. You can count only one. So we've looked at Aromatic compounds, we've looked at ions. Let's look at heteroatoms. So heteroatoms or heterocyclic compounds have a, an atom in the ring that's not carbon, something besides carbon. And remember, one lone pair per atom that is not already in a pi bond can count. So here's a famous one. You might have seen this before. This is called pyridine, and it has a lone pair on the nitrogen. All right, um, so let's look at that. It's cyclic. It looks completely resonance stabilized. Double, single, double, single, double, single. Do we count the lone pair? That's the question. So does this have six pi electrons or does it have eight? Well, the answer is if you look, remember I said only one can count. There's already a pi bond here, so this does not count. This is actually sticking out of the ring um, and it's actually, this is a basic compound because it has a lone pair that's not involved. It's not involved in this resonance going on right here. Um, Conversely, if we look at the five-member version of this, this is called parole, and it has a lone pair. There is not another pi bond there, so this one does count. So both of these are aromatic. Both of these are completely resonance stabilized. Both of these have are, are, are in rings. Both of these have six pi electrons. The difference is this, uh, this pair right here is not involved, so this has an extra pair of electrons that's not involved. All right, um, just to give you a few more examples, if you've studied DNA and you've seen the base pairs, you might have seen um, these molecules before. So let's see if I can draw this. Um, there's an N right there. So, uh, and let's put the lone pairs in. So there's a lone pair here and a lone pair here. So this is called um, pyrimidine, one of the base pairs that we see in DNA and RNA. And if you look, Two, four, six, the inner pi bonds count for Huckel's rule. They count as pi electrons. The outer ones do not count because there's already a pi bond involved. All right, and we can also look at purine. See if I can draw it. 
we'll draw it. Um, oh, I forgot the nitrogen's right here. There's a nitrogen here, and then a nitrogen at the bottom. Lone pair, lone pair. Let's put here a lone pair, and there's a hydrogen here and a lone pair. All right, so let me get a different color here. Which ones count? First of all, it's a ring, two rings, but it's in a ring. Does it have the complete resonance stabilization? Can we go around the ring and have resonance stabilization? Ooh, and I left off, what color was I using? This color? Um, I left off a bond right here. Um, does it have complete resonance stabilization? It does, and if you look, there's a pi bond here, so that doesn't count in the Huckel's rule, in the aromaticity. There's a pi bond here, there's a pi bond here, that doesn't count. This one does not have a pi bond, so it does count. So if we count the pi electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10 fits Huckel's rule. If we put a 2 in there, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10, so that fits Huckel's rule. So remember, we're talking about whether something has these aromatic properties. In the future, we'll talk about what reactions aromatic compounds do, but for now, we need to be able to recognize them.